Welcome back at the live room uh, at Consistorium in Maastricht Jazz Department, where we are continuing today with the second Jazz Master Research presentation of the day. Uh, we will first watch a video presentation, after which we will go into the Q&A here live in the room. Um, welcome to the video presentation of Manuel Requena Suarez. Hello, my name is Manuel Requena, and this is my Reflection Report Master Presentation called The Harmonic Series and Artistic Approach. The journey behind this project was dictated by a mix of personal preferences towards concepts that are related to the harmonic series, musical or non-musical, and much needed guidance from my teachers and colleagues at Conservatorium Maastricht. Thanks to the support of my master coach, Matthias Akeo Novak, and the type of master's program the conservatory offers, I have been able to create a structure around my own interests regarding electric bass playing and music in general. Key interests. Six string electric bass. In 2012, I remember watching Calle 54, a Latin music documentary of well-known musical figures from which Anthony Jackson stood out for me. He plays a six-string electric bass solo in Michel Camilo's piece On Fire that is trying to emulate a piano montuno. The shapes he uses to achieve that texture really interested me and started my journey into the chordal approach I decided to give the six-string electric bass. There are other important figures like Christian Galvez, Andres Rodmitrovsky, Bobby Lewis, Michael Pipokinia, and many other bass players who approach the instrument in this way. Since the six-string electric bass is not even 60 years old, there is a lot of openness in the tradition of the instrument itself that allowed me to stay interested in it for a long period of time. In this sense, most of my voicings or hand techniques are almost all self-taught. Nonetheless, throughout the master program, I have been studying under Joachim Schoenacker, Johann Hansen Larsen, and have also been following some of Barry Harry's harmony concepts. These masters of their craft have definitely refined my voice leading capabilities and harmonic accompaniment skills throughout more traditional methods of approaching music from instruments like the guitar or piano. About two years before starting the master's program at the conservatory, my good friend and teacher Ruben Guzman gave me several lessons on a rhythm approach developed by Efraín Tono, a Puerto Rican percussion player. Up until then, my approach to what I understood as rhythm was very narrow-sighted, because I was only concentrating on precision and not other aspects like melodic contour, motif development, or perspective switching for certain polyrhythmic patterns. One of the key concepts inside this school of music that resonated with me the most was how everything is two and three. After practicing rhythmic exercises throughout that period of my life, I feel that most of the ways I think about rhythm do translate themselves into the compositions I've done for this project. The Harmonic Series At first instance, we are taught about the harmonic series as the building blocks of sound. We are told about overtones, fundamentals, and many other musical concepts that find their logic on top of this physical phenomena. During my master's studies here at Conservatory in Maastricht, I have tried to push my understanding of this term by reading papers from Western scientific and philosophical perspectives of knowledge. I quickly realized that musicians were not the only type of professionals who explored the vastness of the harmonic series, but also mathematicians, physicists, and architects, and so on. It seems like most Western systems of knowledge have been and still are heavily influenced by the continued rediscovering of this term through different approaches that creativity has allowed humankind to manage. I was pleasantly surprised to see how the harmonic series, on some occasions, adopted a less mystical approach and took the shape of something internally abstract, like for example, numbers in what we know as math. To be honest, I still don't know what to make out of this term. Most of the time I spend on it is always full of new discoveries every time I dive into it. Research questions and sub-questions. Main question. What questions can we discover when approaching the musical world experience from an unconventional perspective? Sub-questions. Are there any conclusions to be drawn about the bonding of music and non-musical concepts? Where do my healthy limits of interdisciplinary analysis stand? Where do these types of reflection reports 
take place in general knowledge or academia? Research design. Action driven. The reason why I considered this research to be action driven was because most of my investigation problems appeared whenever I lacked specific knowledge about certain concepts. These issues were fixed whenever more literature review was taken into the master research. Casual. A lot of decisions taken to connect the music material to an unrelated musical concept were based on a personal line of thought. The final connections that were done can be said to be subjective, although personal preferences and life experiences, as we all know, do set the overall tendencies of our day-to-day -day creativeness. Exploratory. At first glance, almost like the freshness of six-string bass chordal playing, I thought I was doing something new. To my surprise, most knowledge and a considerable portion of art is built upon the same principle that I used to justify my journeys through abstract fields of math, physics, and philosophy. So even though there are many books outside interdisciplinary approaches to art, it was not until the final stages of my own research that I was able to properly go through those kinds of materials, mostly because they are usually written by people who do not partake actively into what is traditionally known as art, like music painting, or poetry, to name a few. Plan introduction. In this reflection report, as we like to call it here in the Master Program of Conservatorium Maastricht, my goal is to inquire about certain relationships between the musical world and other seemingly unconnected concepts. Music titles. To properly structure the process I went through in this two-year program, it was important to pick a starting point. For me, the most clear option was the first that could be taken into account since blogging started. The first entries I had were about the titles I was going to give the pieces and served as a solid beginning for the project. During the first few months of staying in a new place, one can go through several emotional phases. In my particular case, a contemplative approach was constantly engaged to the extent of championing itself into a clear position inside the reflection report material. After some critical judgment regarding intimate thoughts and the level of straightforwardness that would be required for this project, the title of the future music material was already taken care of. As I've shown recently, the titles used for this music material come from emotions caused by life experiences that don't involve rigorous logical or scientific analysis. Some of them are even dodgy because of their metaphorical aspect. In that sense, the titles of these pieces should be understood as forms of expression that can acquire countless meanings to whoever decides to engage with them. Musical Framework On the other hand, my previous knowledge of music theory aided me in the clarity of the musical boundaries I would work with throughout the pieces that ended up being a part of this reflection report. The most important boundaries take form in post subdivision, phrases with irregular bar lengths, six string bass chordal playing, and a very ear based approach to melodic development and compositional continuity. Also, after realizing the initial social situation I found myself in, most of my efforts towards the pieces also went into making sure I could play all the pieces in a solo format. Ongoing literature review of the harmonic series. Before even applying for the master's program, my interest in the harmonic series was also starting to flourish. Colleagues of mine were starting to share thoughts about this concept in ways that were not musically related, and drew lines of thought between this new set of ideas and the artistic world. This fearless approach of attempting to understand abstract quantitative theories of thought, and in some cases philosophical ones, to later on connect them in a personal way to the artistic world, fascinates me to this day. The harmonic series is a concept that one may encounter regularly throughout many types of academic studies, and terms like harmony, harmonious, or harmonic, which stem from the Latin root harmonia, are commonly used as adjectives to describe congruous events. One can constantly rediscover this term throughout many scopes of knowledge not only uncovering it as a casualty, but also as proof of its relationship to other perceivable physical phenomena. Having said this, the material that threw itself in front of me was quite vast, and in its vastness communicated the flexibility of its interpretative capabilities. Consequently, there was infinite room for exploration, interpretation, connection, etc., 
that would support any decision made when connecting my musical compositions to whatever way I decided to reinterpret the harmonic series. Music material. Drive. When I was back in Lima, a friend of mine who played guitar had a composition called Beside. I remember studying that song for a recording session we had some months prior to my arrival in Maastricht. Interestingly enough, the way I approached this particular song was through my six-string bass. And if that was not enough to relate that recording to this project, it had a quintuplet subdivision feel as well. Of course, it is hard to say the exact amount of influence this piece had in me while writing this particular song in the master's program. But it is a mentionable antecedent to the one of many approaches I could have had for this type of musical composition. I quickly realized that because of the complexity of the rhythmic aspect of the material, most melodic elements had to be quite simple in the sense that not many intervallic jumps felt natural or even possible when outlining different thematic ideas on top of the rhythm vamps I was exploring in this particular scenario. Relating to the harmonic aspect, I've never been a stylistic progression connoisseur, except for occasional pop progressions and typical minor two fives, although what I have exercised through my years in music is to use harmony as an embellishment for strong thematic material. This helped more than I perceived at the time because it allowed me to focus on the elements of music I found most important in the moment. When initially approaching odd meter compositions like this, it is common practice to ascribe groupings of twos and threes that imply bigger meters. For example, a 5-8 subdivision field can be divided into 2 plus 3, 4 plus 1, 3 plus 2, 1 plus 4, etc. Nonetheless, obtaining musical coherence throughout this method took liberty away from the melody that was being built, so it was an intuitive decision to leave that style of mindset on the side. Perhaps this is one of the main reasons why it was extremely easy for me to create music material that did not follow regular bar phrase lengths or traditional harmonic rhythm. 7 and Apart Both of these compositions are strong reference points for the material that has been brought forth during this master's program. One of the main differences between these two and the rest of the music pieces showcased up until now would be in their origin. For example, when were they created, why were they created, and how were they created? All important questions, but the answers to them are not crucial at all. What is central about them is their role in this project and the expected outcome of have included them. For the majority of the master's program, it was understood that the entirety of the music material would have a common ground. Many of these musical endeavors had just one element that sent them apart, conceptually from their own respective starting points. And because music seems to be an eternal realm, it was enough to end up with distinct final products. Be that as it may, most of the already set paths for acquiring new musical material were starting to create an unsettling sensation, quite indescribable to be honest, but sufficient enough to change my starting point, which had already been set by the 10 accounted emotions I had during my first months in Maastricht. Now, being open to changing such foundational premises seemed daunting, but when it was decided to include these two alien-like compositions into the project, there was just one word that could describe my overall state of mind. Liberating. Introduction to Literature Review Thanks to the different pioneering moments in recorded information history, particularly the invention of writing, the printing press in Europe, and the internet, we are able to access knowledge in ways that can better endure human deconstruction in its transit throughout the years. Ismail Sarah Gelding has many interesting ideas regarding the evolution of knowledge, and it seemed necessary to put an extract of one of his speeches here. Now, writing, which was that great revolution I was talking about, enabled the accumulation of knowledge beyond the memory of an individual and allowed the transmission of that accumulated knowledge through time and space. But whether it was written in stone, or on clay tablets, as in Babylon, or on papyrus, as in ancient Egypt, or in scrolls, we know everywhere, or in codexes, it, whether written by hand or printed, it didn't really matter. It was all the way of communicating. And aside, the printing press marked the true beginnings of the Industrial Revolution because it was the mass production of a standardized commodity you could actually... By this account, in the music community, we have been able to assign different characteristics to certain musical styles now that we have had more time to gaze into the development of this art form over the years. Many things have been written down about music, 
and we should be sensitive about the different ways our knowledge on this subject affects our approach to the art itself. Knowledge has been rediscovered in a sort of liquid state, where at plain sight one cannot separate the individual elements of that shifting body. It is now our responsibility and always has been to be creatively divergent and probably unexpected with the connections we discover between music and the rest of what is. The Harmonic Series During the greatest steps of humanity in the recording of knowledge, a term was created and it is most widely attributed to the Greek thinker called Pythagoras. And since its first interpretable recorded appearance came in the form of vibration within strings, it was natural to connect it with the musical world almost instantly. Yet this term was not purposefully artistic, but abstract, inside the number realm in nature. And it's as if one can approach this term consciously through the understanding of wavelengths, partials, proportionality, and even historically or unconsciously, for example, a more spiritual approach that is harder to define than the previous type. There are ways to come closer to the term harmonic series. Some could go through the following, trying to understand the philosophical implications of the terms consonance and dissonance that stem from a cultural assimilation of the harmonic series. 2. Relationships between the Fourier and the harmonic series from a numerical point of view. 3. An esoteric approach. 4. How have different scientific theorems that are supported by the harmonic number series formula help the discovery of the gravitational field? And there are many other ways to come closer to this term. The options are limitless, yet in the end we usually find ourselves with something to share, an everlasting unfinished product, something that was never in our thoughts in the initial process of our endeavor, but a new creation or like Arnold Schoenberg would say, a gift given by the Almighty. After this brief introduction of the harmonic series, and having gone through papers that speak more about it from other fields of knowledge, I was ready to branch out from the traditional approach musicians use towards this term. Examples of Literature Review Now, I won't go into specific details about the concepts that have appeared in my path. What is important, though, about the following section is to understand that there is a process behind the interpretation of this multitude of terms that branch out of the harmonic series. And as artists, since we have no Western scientific background embedded in us, we can allow ourselves massive freedom when reflecting upon writings about math, physics, or philosophy. Color. Words can tell us many things about themselves without looking outside their realm. For example, if I were to ask, what meaning does harmonic have to you? One can eventually take a phonological approach and connect words like harmonious, harmony, harmonics, etc. to it. Later on, you could try gathering those last terms and describe them subjectively, using words like balance, nature, equal forces, and so on. Whichever path is taken, one usually ends up with an individual pathway, yet we may find that most of the end results are quite universal. We would come close to an of an integrated nature, congress, type of concept. In this sense, many of us should have been introduced at least in this time and age to the idea of harmonic systems, through vision and more specifically, color. Even as children, interacting with color through painting dynamics is a step that eventually shapes our personal taste or sense of balance towards the different possible combinations of it. From trichromatic color and the opponent process theories to John Dalton and his essays regarding his own symptoms with what would be later known as colored blindness, and looking even further, when the discipline of science would start its standardization, we can assume that our ability to process light is considerably responsible for our progress in almost all areas of life, not only in an additive matter, but openly directed to our own needs as a society. And perhaps this way of approaching the faculty of eyesight or life in that sense was what led us into understanding light and its properties its relationship to energy and electrons at an atomic level, exploring the electromagnetic wave spectrum by ultraviolet and infrared waves, and many other examples. The reactions towards color are not only scientific, but also individual opinions, which interestingly enough, are types of creative fuel for academic studies. Energy. Tackling energy from different angles is possible. And for now, we have focused only on Western scientific systems of knowledge, because in a way, it is predominantly present in a very similar form throughout the whole world. Nonetheless, to start explaining the idea of energy, one must understand that these terms may seem strictly scientific, but they intersect with different scopes of human understanding. 
To try to build a grid that can support a conceptual idea of energy on paper is quite a difficult task. In this project's particular case, difficult moments arose whenever inquiries were made into the world of said term, because whenever questions appeared, they were immediately reinterpreted by the mind of a non-scientist. Yet these thoughts and whatever reasons for them one may come up with for fortunes or misfortunes are all sustained and follow a certain trend by the continued interests of humanity due to the results in this given field through the past several centuries, probably since the beginning of recorded history. Although, if displaying energy and the form it takes through different fields in this paper could be attempted, we could start saying that this research would not be attainable without energy. Not only is one using electrical energy to power the machine this is written on, but there is also chemical energy going through the physical body of the writer while writing this paper. And now it is possible to ask yet more questions. What other types of energy are there? Do different types of energy interact? And if so, where would the line be drawn between fields of knowledge where different types of energy interact? All reasonable questions. I do go more into depth about energy and its relationship to music in my paper, but for now we can close this point with a quote from Feynman. There is a fact, or if you want to call it a law, governing all natural phenomena that's known to date. There's no exception known to this. It's exact, as far as we know. And the law is called the conservation of energy. It states, there is a certain quantity, uh, which we call energy, that doesn't change in the manifold changes which nature undergoes. Now that's a very abstract idea because it's a mathematical principle. It says that there's a numerical quantity that doesn't change when something happens. It's not a description of a mechanism or anything. It's just a strange fact that you can calculate some number and when you're all finished watching nature go through her tricks, you calculate the number again and it's the same. As you have seen in these last two examples, the starting approach towards the concepts themselves is much more important than an actual in-depth understanding, which would also be impossible to obtain in less than two years. It was and will be okay to not worry about grasping these concepts in their entirety. The foremost purpose of this exercise is to expand our vision over what we've gotten to known as the harmonic series, and with that intent, we broaden our possibilities for interaction with musical pieces, however they may appear. Connection Example Considering that most compositions have had a similar starting point through songs, titles, and later acquired a set of musical boundaries, it is now time to showcase an example of the actual connection between musical pieces and non-musical concepts. The piece I chose for this was Reality. One of the main reasons I decided to name this piece Reality was to remind myself of how positive a situation it was to be doing a master's degree in the Netherlands. A lot of second-guessing myself thoughts were going through my mind before coming here, and it was needed for me to externalize the positive outcome of being accepted into the master program at Conservatory in Maastricht, so that I would be reminded of it and not be stuck in a particular moment. In that sense, the piece seems to have acquired certain elements that in my own judgment recall sensations that portray balance in its most approachable state. If one desired to get technical with music terminology, not that I follow any specific form of expression, to describe the piece, maybe phrases like pair bar phrasing, tonal harmony, singable melody, etc. can come into mind. There were different stages in the construction of the pieces where certain musical logical systems wanted to appear. The one that seems the closest, conceptually at least, would be the idea of elongating the piece to include a minor mode interpretation of the material to introduce the idea of dualism as well. Another factor that was completely extra musical and affected the work even before it started with a musical instrument were the choices regarding the tonal key and the time signature of the piece. It's quite a difficult anthropological concept to explain without knowing the academic terminology. So let's just say that in today's music society, a song in G major and in 4-4 does not seem like an unapproachable song at all. In fact, quite the opposite. Most people would consider innately and not through conscious reason, that music with those parameters may communicate a positive, at least neutral, message for the listener. And because all this in relation to the experiences I was having during those first months, I thought that in a way it all boiled down to my brain and the input it was receiving from different sources family, money issues, physical senses, consciousness, etc. Out of this handful of input, the one that stuck the most for this particular musical work was color. 
following the line of color, what fascinates me the most about the physical phenomena we call color is the idea of perceiving the world without our brains being able to acknowledge these vibrations of matter and reinterpreting them as they traditionally do. Would we see in black and white? Would we even have developed that physiological trait? And is perhaps the visible light spectrum a continuation of our adaptation towards the opposite way? What I mean is to eventually not need eyes anymore because we would have already adapted ourselves through the span of millennia at a biological level to the laws of nature that we are now finding out govern us. It is also interesting how we can talk about color harmonies. Usually these colors may be described as proportional or complementary to each other. Authors like Hemholtz and Ewald Herring speak extensively on the subject and are pioneers in what one might call the vision field industry. Furthermore, if color and music were to find manufactured relationships in this piece, I would do the following. Find the frequency assigned to the tonic of the tonal system the piece is in. In this case, the piece is in G major. We then apply a mathematical exponentiation of the Hertz quantity to the mathematically approached color spectrum levels of frequency and assign a specific color for a piece in G major. And this is very far away from what real scholars do. Nonetheless, it opened some further questions for me as well. Can we create color systems that are related to music and identify some pattern between the colors being displayed even though the apex of the system has the capacity to vary in position, meaning it changes pitch or color fundamentals? Speaking for myself, I really enjoy making these types of connections. They might seem and probably are subjective or random at best. Either way, the amount of fullness I get from doing so arrives at its peak whenever I learn new things about common things, like color. Conclusions I was not completely aware of the unfiltered information that had been put into this project. Since it started, I did have main and sub-questions that motivated me to keep pushing forward, but in the end, most of the answers to the questions stated at the beginning were quite far from being answered at all. To be honest, I even ended up with more questions. Main question, what questions can we discover when approaching the musical world experience from an unconventional perspective? The constant overlapping of concepts that are considered to be artistic or not is much more common than what we expect it to be. Interdisciplinary approaches to knowledge are very engaging for artists. It appears that we find comfort faster in the inexplicableness of things. And alongside this comfort, we usually are pretty receptive to creating questions which are only limited by our imagination. The questions that appear in the last examples are also questions that replicate themselves in other scenarios. Now they are not exactly the same question, but they do branch out from the same place, which is a place I would like to call the not knowing place. Sub-questions. Are there any conclusions to be drawn about the bonding of music and non-musical concepts? So I want to start by saying that yes, there are conclusions to be drawn from this question. But in a strange way, in my particular case, these conclusions have almost entirely come in the form of even newer questions. And for me, that is one of the most positive outcomes I could have had, because it just means I'm still trying. So yes, the bonding between music and non-musical concepts is possible. It is also an extremely subjective and creative activity overall. And finally, I believe that both sides are beneficiaries of this type of abstract connection. On one side, as an artist, you may find newer sources of inspiration. On the other hand, you get to experience new ways of approaching non-musical concepts from a fresh perspective. Where do my healthy limits of interdisciplinary analysis stand? To answer this question, I believe I need to reference Arnold Schoenberg. He has an interesting interview that happened towards the end of his life in which he says the following. Externally, coherence manifests itself an intelligible application of the relationship and similarity inherent in musical configurations. What I believe, in fact, is that if you have done your duty with the utmost sincerity, then the IMF presents you with a gift, with additional features of duty such as you never could have produced by your talent alone. 
After sharing this quote, I feel it necessary to clarify that my healthy limits behind interdisciplinary studies have come not because of the amount of time I invested into working on this project or the social acceptance of my teachers and colleagues, but rather as an acknowledgement of the uncut corners I've seen in myself throughout the master programs these past two years. In my opinion, the project I've arrived at is far from being clear or concise enough to be communicated. It also lacks a proper communication stream. But in the end, it is the result of a sincere effort towards becoming a better musician or professional in general. Where do these types of reflection reports take place in general knowledge or academia? It is my belief that this type of interdisciplinary text is helpful for general knowledge because it offers fresh perspectives on subjects that have accompanied us for a while now. In that sense, this reflection report from Conservatory Maastricht should be considered not only as a finished product, but also more importantly as a stepping stone towards our attempt as humankind to understand ourselves and what we are experiencing in what we call life. Final words. First, I want to thank my parents for supporting me in this musical journey that started almost 13 years ago. They, together with my two sisters, are the only reason I'm actually here. I also want to thank the Conservatory, the teachers, my colleagues, the administrative staff. These two years have been a great experience. I'm glad to have been part of this program and see you around. Welcome back at the live room here at Conservatory Maastricht, the jazz department, where we thank uh, Manuel Requena for his beautiful uh, video presentation. And uh, I would like to turn first to his uh, coach for the first question, uh, Matthias. Yes, um, it's a little bit difficult. There's a lot of information and a vast universe that kind of represents your brain <laughs> and your <laughs> thoughts that you go through. <coughs> Uh, but something that, that comes to mind is uh, how does it help you to go through all that search um, for decision making for your own compositions, for your own music? Uh, since I feel what did not really come through is that your compositions are beautiful, you, you write beautiful music. But now, what, what was for you the, the help that you gained out of researching? If I'm understanding correctly the question, you mean how does this research, how did this research help the compositions or? Yeah. the decision making on what, um, what's next, what's, what's to do. Well, I think personally I took those two, those two activities, so composition and research as separate things, even though they interlapped at least subconsciously and also sometimes consciously. But actually, the the music compositions were, I guess they just all came from the first two months that I was here, you know, and just, I just tried to hook them up to that area of my life instead of the constant research I was doing throughout the, throughout the master program. Um, then I guess, towards the end of the program, when I was already done, not done, but at least already a little bit more into what I was going to do for my literature review, I think then I did, I did, of course, like sometimes just think about the compositions in after I finished them, just to see if I could eventually hook, hook them up to something, to a harmonic concept term. To so, a to a harmonic concept yes. term. Yeah. So, I think in, in a way, the research, doing the research helped me 
in the compositions in that way. You know, it helped me just broaden my options to decide what to connect to what. But musically speaking, I don't know if it actually translated directly, at least for me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And if you look at, because you mentioned you wrote the most of the music in the first two months, is that right? So the, no, like the titles of the pieces? Yeah. I, I just based them off out of in the first two months. Yeah. And then the music I kept writing at least for just the six months. Either way, it was before the first year. Yeah. Like before the first year ended. Yeah. So looking at how these two worlds are relating. This is what is, I think, the essence of what you're trying to bring across, mm -hmm. yet not very literally revealing. It's more an expose of what happened, in a way. Yeah. I, I perceive it this way, right? So now I'm wondering, gosh, where is this question headed? <laughs> I'm wondering, uh, the internalization of all this theory, what did it do to you? I guess it just calmed, calmed me down, first of all. You know, at a, at a mental health level, it just, was, it's just it gave me something that I didn't find in music sometimes, because when I approach music, sometimes I feel a little bit unsettled when I play a piece, and then four months pass and I can't play it anymore. And then what I felt in this research is I felt that I knew something and I just could know it and recall it mm -hmm. even though time had passed. So I think that's the most important thing it did to me. It brought me like stability to mm -hmm. concentrate more on other things that I enjoyed. Yeah. Although I really enjoy I really enjoyed the like the research part to be honest. And we, we just had a presentation of Rosanna Coxon who was show who was telling us that for her the internalization of of course it was musical research, right? Mm -hmm. But the internalization caused that when she then went into composing intuitively, it turned out a lot of that actually did come out of the music. Yet you you just said to Matthias that you probably don't see that in your compositions. Is that right, or or is it dependent on the composition? Um, can can you phrase the like, question? All right, did different? you feel that this internalization, and then letting it loose, right? You let it go, and then you are writing music. Mm -hmm. Did that internalization of this knowledge? Uh, come out into the compositions in any way, in any of the compositions? Maybe I think one of the points that comes to my mind right now was that while I was doing the research, I was constantly writing about it. About it. I mean, every source I had, I constantly hmm. wrote down an annotation. In that sense, I think that writing down the musical compositions <coughs> and not only recording them like by audio, and having a proper, like making sure that what I wrote down was clear enough for me to revisit later was something that I actually didn't find in music before in my particular journey. Mm -hmm. And while I was doing the, re the research, it was necessary. And I think that is one of maybe one of the points that hmm. one of the answers to your question. I yeah. mean, I'm pretty sure it's there are more points, but right now that is the first one that comes to mind. Hmm. Very interesting. Do you have a question? Yeah, you said about the uh, two first months that you came up with the, <coughs> with, the uh, with the titles. So you gave yourself like, uh, okay, I want to have something to write a musical, right? Yeah, yeah. About it. one of them was mistakes. Could you say a little bit more about this? Where were the mistakes? Yeah. I mean, the, the the thing what I noticed was like a lot of odd meters and all of them changing the meters. Mm. Yeah, I Could think. Could you say a little bit where, where, where there was structure? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Mistakes yeah. was actually a piece I recorded for the first time. Okay. Like, I was just improvising. I, like, I made sure I warmed up and then I recorded myself once and then I transcribed that piece because I just wanted to make sure that I was okay with what I played in the moment. Oh, okay. Even though okay. maybe in other scenarios, maybe you, you don't allow yourself that much freedom. 
because you think that it has to be a certain way. Sometimes it has to be a certain way, right? But And then you think about mistakes, right? Like, oh, I messed up here and here. But then in that, in that piece, I just played, and then I later transcribed what I played. And you didn't change anything? No. That's oh. why it's pretty complicated to read. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, so there's a transcription. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think um, right now, like the way the pieces are written down, they are, they, they don't sound like they look because right now it's just the chord and the melody. But as I said in the presentation, I was doing like this six string chordal bass approach. So actually the textures also in the songs are a bit quite similar. Like they are very like arpeggiated type of chord things. So that's why, but they're like really random. Like that, I think I can allow myself that freedom in those compositions. So I guess that's why that was the easiest way to write <laughs> most of the material. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Uh, I read about the philosophical approach, almost like existential, that you had to music, composition, but also like world events in general. Uh, and I felt like, did you feel overwhelmed by the cascading of new questions? It sounded like every question was opening three more questions, and every time you had more questions, and like, would you feel like to be able to use those elements in a composition, you would have to restrain yourself to maybe just one concept that could go in a song instead of like having all of those questions? Would, would that be too overwhelming for you? <coughs> Was that too overwhelming? Yeah, I think if I took the traditional approach of trying to do a composition based on a concept, yeah then or in a question right then yeah for sure i personally would have problems not problems but i would either put no boundaries or put a really strong one yeah. just to make sure i can just pass a page on that and go to the music but since this process started in the music and then it just nurtured from the research i was doing then it wasn't an issue during the mat during the composition of the pieces I actually Oh, that um, then all that research that you actually, have. personally, like right now, I don't see the, the appeal in that because I think it's really, it would be really hard for me, especially now that I've done a lot of research, just to think about like what is good enough to be the starting point of a, of a musical piece. I don't know. Those are the questions that I'm asking myself even right now. You know, I, I guess I would just start from the music and then see. I guess I'm more comfortable the other way around. Yeah. Felipe. A similar question. Uh, like, because you, you started from the music, then you read a lot. <coughs> but do you play the songs again now? And if you do play them again, do you play them differently because of what you read? Or do you feel that it's similar as when you play them in the beginning? Yeah, I mean, I think I've put a lot of work into the music composition, so my plan was actually to record them properly, at least whenever the master's program finishes and there's a little bit more time to fix on that. Um, so that's like the plan with that. So I do, I do play them, but I don't have them all like really, like really tight in the sense that I don't play them as I wrote, I wrote them, you know, I would play them, I can play the melodies and stuff, but they come in different shapes. Like sometimes I add one beat more, sometimes the subdivision is five and then I put a six or a seven, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, and, oh. Even more, uh, do you play the songs by thinking in the concept that you read about? Oh, okay. Mm. Or do you try to channel that concept into the playing or is it more separate? No, the, the concept is separate, but the title is, at, if I'm thinking about something or trying to think about something, that is, then I'm mostly trying to think about the title more than the concept that I linked it to. Yeah. Um, oh, now I lost my question. <laughs> what was it? Oh, yeah. 
could you do you think you could have written the music without studying all the research material? Would it have been the same music? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you're not prepared for well, this. Okay, it, it wouldn't. Well, <laughs> okay, so the last question. Well, yeah, it wouldn't have been the same music. Philosophical, right? philosophical question. I mean, but um, yeah, I think. Like most of the research I did wasn't musical, right? No, no. So the That's clear. music theory was there, and the rhythm concepts were also there, like from my classes with uh, with a friend of mine in Lima. So in that sense, I guess that yes, I could have have written the songs, although having like having them written in the master's program where we're here focusing for something. And we're like doing the program here. It does allow a certain like time freedom or you know time investment freedom. So I put a lot of time into them, and I guess I wouldn't have been able to do that in a normal situation, like a working in a si like working musician, because it would have just demanded another type of discipline that I am kind of getting to understand now more. And yeah, I guess that's my that's my answer. It's interesting because when I read your your whole work, you know, and I read your whole documentation, for me there seem to be way more ties between all the material in your music than for you. <laughs> and I'm wondering if I'm creating that or if it's true. <laughs> no, I, I well, I think it's true. It's both, maybe, right? <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's both. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that's the great. That's one of the coolest thing about. We will never that, that know, right? Project. Like you, can do all the, you can do all the links, you know. Like right. No one says that you can't. Any more questions here? Thank you, Manuel. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you also online. And uh, we will go into jury deliberation once again. And uh, at 5 o'clock, we will return for the last presentation of Jiang Mi Yun. Thank you. <laughs>